I don't normally tune into General Motors investor days, but uh, I was pretty excited to see what they talk about the future of autonomous cars. Uh, their valuation, uh, Tesla is running laps around GM in terms of valuation, even though GM is the number five or four based on revenue or units on the planet. And Tesla is way, way down there. Now, why is that the case? Because investors see the future as autonomy and the future as EV and more important, uh, I'll call it the, the infinitely customizable car. And that's something that, that, that people lose sight of. So um, they came out and introduced, GM introduced what's called Ultra Cruise. And this is a higher positioned uh, system than Cruise, which think of Cruise as L1 up to L2 plus and think of um, Ultra Cruise as uh, three and, 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 and maybe four. It was hard to determine exactly how far it went into four, but these things are kind of amorphous, but the ability, uh, and I'll, um, I'll, I'll quote GM on this, and, and this is part of the news that's important, uh, true hands-free driving across 95% of driving scenarios, and GM says uh, Ultra Cruise will ultimately enable door-to-door -door hands-free driving on all public roads in the US. Now, they didn't say uh, no steering wheel, and they didn't say that the drivers weren't going to be uh, in there. So that leads me to believe three and four. But deep in their press release and their slide deck was this, we are using five, I'm going to use air quotes, nanometer technology. And the architecture is scalable. And I was like, okay, uh, two companies that I think have that now, uh, NVIDIA, well, at least the scalable part, uh, NVIDIA and Qualcomm. NVIDIA hasn't talked so much about the five nanometer, but there is a company, a chip company that you and I both know that has five nanometer uh, and a scalable platform called Qualcomm Ride. And I did an analysis uh, at CES 2020 that cataloged that Qualcomm and GM were aligning for ADAS. So was this Qualcomm, is this Qualcomm silicon? Uh, GM didn't, didn't say it. Qualcomm didn't say it, but I'm kind of following the breadcrumbs there. And if I look at Qualcomm, $10 billion automotive backlog, $1 billion annual run rate based on the most recent quarter, $250 million in revenue. I'm kind of thinking that this is Qualcomm. Yeah, I think you hit it on the head, Pat. This is not hard to back into. GM doesn't want to get its investors lost in who its technology partners are. So it instead focused on process, the capabilities, the technology. But of course, if you're a semiconductor company, um, <laughs> only Intel has ever been able to somehow convince every one of its OEMs to slap its brand all over its products, which credit to Intel for that. We'll talk more about them a little bit later. But uh, in terms of companies like Qualcomm, you know, I, I wrote a piece after IA Mobility in Germany, kind of talking about semiconductor companies becoming the linchpin of the future of automotive. Um, this is a great example where looking at the underpinnings of companies as large as GM, and of course, you're going to see the same thing with the Volkswagen groups, huge automotive groups, understanding wh whom, which tech companies they are acquiring their technology is going to give a pretty good insight into growth and the role that semiconductor players are making. Now, um, I'm going to pivot the Qualcomm discussion here on that note because Snapdragon Ride is, I'm almost certain, what's uh, what's going to drive the future of GM's autonomous driving platform. Um, and of course, Snapdragon Ride is an extensible platform that also uh, connects the rest of the stack. You know, when you think about things like infotainment, telematics, um, instrument cluster, it's about this expansive tool set that can be built on compute. Um, and that can can you know be scale out. There are other architectures that are more closed for ADAS, and that's those are interesting as well. And every OEM is going to approach this differently, but that's the route Qualcomm is on. And speaking of Qualcomm, uh, just want to touch on the fact that you probably heard in automotive they were you know in this uh, battle to buy Vionier. Um, originally, Qualcomm had a deal to buy Arriver from Vionier, and then what happened is a big tier one. Um, Magna came in and, and made a tender for the whole company. 
And so all of a sudden, Qualcomm was going to lose out this prized asset. Arriver is a L2 plus ADAS system that was acquired by Vianeer. And that was really what Qualcomm wanted. Um, they're looking for something that, you know, they're piecing together their ADAS through Snapdragon Ride as it stands. They want to expedite that with some good, good technology that was held by this Vianeer organization. But with the Magna deal, uh, Qualcomm had to re uh, come back to the table basically uh, aggressively in the night on a Sunday, made a tender over the uh, offer of Magna, got board support um, and essentially moving forward. But everyone knew Qualcomm doesn't want to acquire the entire tier one, doesn't want to be a tier one. Qualcomm wanted that intellectual property innovation and some components of, of v Vianeer, which was the arriver platform. And so they came out this week, announced a deal, partnering with a company called SSW. And basically just to kind of be clear is now everyone knows the path. The path is gonna be SSW is going to acquire the Vianeers in its entirety. Qualcomm for a small sum, small sum as compared to the whole deal is going to acquire Arriver. SSW, this organization, it's not a private equity firm, but it's gonna act as a, um, you know, as, as a partner in essentially identifying the most important assets of the Vianeer organization and then finding homes for the rest of the company uh, that are ideally more strategic. Um, in the end, Pat, my assessment is this is Qualcomm making a move to stay focused on what it was set out to do, which is expand that ride platform, acquire this ADAS technology and not get stuck in the middle of parting out a large tier one, uh, found a partner company to help header the deal. Of course, you know, it's going to get its looks from a regulatory standpoint, but it seems like it was really well organized, put together and orchestrated under, you know, new CEO Cristiano Oman's leadership. And as I see it, um, they're going to get their 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 man arriver and Qualcomm's moving forward. And this automotive space for them is going to be really significant. You said 10 billion pipeline. You can tell the company's really focused on it. Great. Great analysis. Uh, I'm glad you added on the VNR piece because it's all part of, of the puzzle here. I put a, a, a lot of links uh, from Daniel and I in the in the show notes to that, that goes over uh, all this. In fact, Daniel, I, I wrote an article that said, no, uh, Qualcomm isn't becoming an automotive tier one. Not the most uh, creative headlines uh, put up <laughs> on Forbes, but uh, I, I wanted to I wanted to make that point. 